Can you just make two copies of that? Sure. One to each party. Thank you. I was going to call the case. Okay. Do you, do you need something to talk to him for a second? Yes. Go ahead. Do you want, you can turn the audio off for a second. Good morning, everyone. The court will call State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Good morning, Judge Schuacher. Leslie Basie and Zach Wichow appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. <clears throat> I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for the discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and do not consent to being called that name for the record. All right, thank you. That is noted. Uh, the record will also reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing street clothes, uh, specifically a suit and tie and a mask as well. And don't get safe to be in court that night. I understand, sir. All right, I do want to put on the record I gave the parties this morning. It's an excerpt from uh, a judicial bench book on opening statements. It's about a page and a half. Um, I thought it would be helpful to provide to Mr. Brooks as he uh, puts together his opening statement. Um, it has <coughs> reference to uh, some Supreme Court rules, SCR, some case law, talks about the manner and purpose, scope, um, and other things. And uh, as I indicated yesterday, sir, um, the I like to call it the roadmap. Uh, it's referred to here as a framework so that the jury can better understand and evaluate evidence. It must also be um, based on the law and the evidence you believe is properly admissible. Um, I'm going to further advise you at the time when you do make your opening statement uh, that it not reference subject matter jurisdiction. That is, despite what I know you believe to be to the contrary, it is not a requirement to be proven in this case. Um, it is not a factual or legal argument that is accurate, and therefore I'm prohibiting you from referencing that during either opening statements or closing arguments. Uh, uh, with that, I believe For the record, is this, is this the, which you're referring to, this? The page and a half is from my judicial bench book. I thought it would be helpful to you as, so that you have a better awareness and understanding of the manner and purpose of an opening statement. This is what guides me as I uh, preside over cases. Okay, I set for value and return for value these documents. Um, 
I don't know why the reference to subject matter jurisdiction in the opening statement, I, I'm pretty aware that that wouldn't be part of an opening or closing statement. I, I don't. Okay, great. I don't get why that. That's I wanted relevant. to make the record clear. So I appreciate you indicating to me yeah. that you're aware of that. Even though subject matter jurisdiction has not been proven on the record. <clears throat> And should Sir, be addressed. it does not need to be proven on the it, record. It's it, established by law and by the fact that, as my written decision indicates, uh, commenced when the com criminal complaint was filed in this case. It's conferred by Constitution and by statute. And who was, it, who was the uh, complaint filed by? Because subject matter jurisdiction Sir, has yet I'm to be proven on the record. I'm not going to go down this path today. I'm just advising you, you cannot reference that in your opening I mean, statement. I, that was something I've already had the common sense to know, but also subject matter jurisdiction has not been proven for the record. All right, uh, next topic then. I believe the state has filed Should be proven a for motion. The by the prosecution. The objection <laughs> is noted. It is not legally sound. It's overruled. It's definitely legally sound. All right, uh, uh, attorney Op I'm gonna turn to attorney Opper. I believe they filed a motion. This morning, uh, has it been pulled through? I probably just need to refresh, but Madam Clerk. It was served on Mr. Brooks last night in the jail, Your Honor. Um, All right, uh, go I ahead, you can make. Let me I, just didn't, I didn't look at the document. Uh, I accept the return, for, accept for value, return for value the document. I didn't look at it. Um, So I don't, I, don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. All right, well, Attorney Opera, it's your motion. I'll hear from you. Your Honor, uh, we are moving to amend the information with respect to one word in the entire document. We're changing, we're asking to change the location of count 76. The information reads, as it uh, reads right now, it reads at Frame Park. We're asking to change that to near Frame Park. Uh, we believe that that's a more consistent um, statement that aligns with the testimony of victim PPP, Erica Patterson, as she testified in this trial. Uh, we're not asking to change any criminal charges. We're not asking to change any dates. Uh, it's, I think, a very small change in the charging document. <coughs> the defendant has been on notice of the facts of this transaction. Um, it's reflected in a number of police reports and Ms. Patterson's recorded statement, which the defendant has copies of. And so uh, I don't think that there's any grounds for a claim of prejudice by this change, and we're asking to move forward with that amendment to the information. All right, thank you. Any uh, position on that, sir? Um, yes. Uh, first of all, for the record, um, there were originally two charges associated with this with this one party and um, these charges have been charged for the better part of a year I, I feel that if there was essentially one word that needed to be changed it had it's been more than ample time for it to be changed even after uh, one of the charges was dismissed it could have been that topic could have been visited at that time for it to change I, I don't I don't think one change in one word at this point really has any any bearing on the testimony or the actual charge. I, I don't understand why a motion needs to be heard about one word. Is is think kind of at this point kind of a, a moot point. It's been charged like this for a year basically. The language hasn't ever been a uh, reference to being changed before uh, yesterday. So what, what is the significance of this now at this point? Thank you, sir. Court is guided by uh, section 971.29 sub 2 of the Wisconsin statutes, which provides at the trial, the court may allow amendment of the complaint, indictment or information to conform to the proof where such amendment is not prejudicial to the defendant. Uh, K-1 
case law states that when an amendment to the charging document does not change the crime charged, and when the alleged offense is the same and the results from the same transaction, there's no prejudice to the defendant. State versus Wickstrom, 118 Wisconsin 2nd, 339, found at page 348. It's a court of appeals case from 1984. Uh, and also, I point the parties to State versus Durango, 229 Wisconsin 2nd, 1, and State versus Gerard, 189 Wisconsin 2nd, 505. Um, the first of those two cases is a Court of Appeals case from 1999, and then the second of, that, of those referenced is from the Supreme Court from 1995. I'd also point the parties to State versus Frey, 178 Wisconsin 2nd, 729, a Court of Appeals case uh, from 1993. Um, as far as whether this is a moot issue or not, I'll find that it is ripe for determination by this court to hear this motion, and that is uh, because the jury uh, ultimately uh, will be instructed similarly to what the jurors were instructed at the beginning of the case uh, the charges are read those are based off of the information um, and this proposed amendment does conform to the proof um, there is no prejudice to mr brooks it does not change uh, the charge in any way um, it is still the same offense uh, it's still from the same uh, general information that was indicated in the criminal complaint uh, so for all of those reasons i will grant the state's request to amend the information and the state may file that document uh, as soon as possible uh, i have a question about that so this same uh the same person is scheduled to testify again what if something changes in the testimony I'm not going to answer that, sir. It would require me to speculate on what that situation might be and to give an advisory opinion, which I will not do. But what happens if, if that happens? I'm not going to answer that, sir. I can't. You're asking me to give an advisory decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm not allowed to do that, actually. Okay, so we dealt with that makes then. Makes no sense. The state has not rested yet. Uh, will the state anticipate calling any other witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, as indicated yesterday, we do intend to recall Detective Casey to the stand, and I'd like to uh, make a record in that regard, please. Go ahead. Your Honor, uh, Detective Casey did testify once for the state uh, early in the presentation of the matter. His focus at that point was largely on uh, assisting the jury in understanding the layout of the parade route. Um, giving background and uh, contextual information to the jury on um, the different parade units that were impacted, uh, what, you know, what they looked like. We showed several videos with Detective Casey just for background and context purposes. He then went on to describe his personal interaction with the SUV as it came through the intersection of White Rock and Maine. And uh, essentially, um, that was the the bulk of his testimony uh, during his first testimony. We're seeking to recall him now. This is not unusual. It is commonly done in cases. We never excused him from his subpoena. We never asked for him to be excused from his subpoena. We always intended to recall him. We did this so that we can efficiently present the information to the jury. Um, the types of questions we have for him now go more to the investigation itself and his role as the lead detective in this case. There will not be duplication or repetitive <coughs> questions. I'm not going back to the corner of White Rock and Maine with Detective Casey during this uh, round of testimony. We want to ask him uh, essentially about how some of the victims along the parade route were identified. We want to ask him about um, some of the topics that have been addressed throughout the course of the state's case as far as identification of the vehicle and identification of the driver and um, we need to still introduce the um, 
certified bail forms from Milwaukee County for the two bail jumping counts. So he will be asked about that. I estimate my direct examination of Detective Casey would be about 20 minutes. So this is not um, going to be repetitive. It's information, again, that he has as the lead detective in the case to, uh, to assist the jury in understanding some of the things on the back end that he was involved in, not uh, his role at the parade. So we are, um, we have been very efficient in our presentation. I believe Your Honor would agree with that. Um, we're not wasting time here, but we just have a few more questions to wrap this up. Right. Any position from you, sir? And yes, I do. And I'm going to start with what was just said. The, um, the prosecution feels that they've been efficient in their presentation. So it, it, it seems like to me uh, an attempt to get more questions in that, that could have been asked in the first place. If, if Your Honor recalls, um, Detective Casey was... Um, testifying for quite some time to the point that we actually had to have a break before I can cross-examine Detective Casey, if you recall. He was up there quite some time. That was more than enough time for uh, any other foundations to be laid, any, any questions to be asked at that time. Um, and also, from my recollection, he was asked to be excused. So, essentially having him start off and then end it, I feel like it's an attempt to get questions that was maybe forgotten to be asked, answered. And essentially, what what more could be gained by a second testimony from Detective Casey? What what more could be gained that hasn't already been learned? We learned about uh, vehicles and uh, identification uh, by numerous witnesses. We've 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 been through the uh, the uh, inspection of the vehicle. We've been through. Uh, uh, DNA analysis of the vehicle. We've been through uh, numerous things in regards to the vehicle. Uh, even the uh, even the uh, reconstruction uh, testimony. We, we we've been through all of that. Um, seems like nothing more than to get extra questions answered that could have been asked from the get go. As seeing as how he, he was up there for quite some time and, and, and none of those issues were raised at that time. What would be the significance at this point? Um, when it's essentially I, I should be already presenting uh, my defense at this point in, in, in trial. I don't see the relevancy of it. And to my knowledge, he was excused from his subpoena. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The court has discretion under 906.11. Um, it's a statute I've quoted with frequency during the course of these proceedings. Um, I've listened to the state's offer of proof. I've listened to uh, the objections made by the defendant. Um, in my discretion, I am going to allow Detective Casey to be recalled uh, for the reasons laid out by the state. As I understand his proposed testimony today, it is not to rehash uh, topics that uh, he was questioned about initially. Uh, this has to do with his investigation and role uh, subsequent to the initial contact um, with Mr. Brooks at the beginning of the parade route. And uh, as the state indicated, uh, we'll address certain things including um, identification uh, related to the vehicle of the driver throughout the investigation, identification of certain victims, 
in addition, there are two additional charges for which the state has not yet presented testimony, so it's proper for those as well. It's relevant, and um, I will allow it for those reasons. So the state will be able to recall Detective Casey, and we'll have that done, obviously, when the jury is brought out. Any other preliminary issues, then, from the state? Um, Your Honor, just, um, I am working on going through our um, list of exhibits, and I will work with your clerk to make sure that everything that I'm showing was admitted and accepted by the court um, is what she has so that we can clear that up before we actually rest. All right, thank you. Anything preliminary from you, sir? Yeah, just a quick question about that uh, last uh, thing again. What, I will be able to recross examine. Oh, right? yes, you will. And is essentially anything left off limits to my cross? Or what? I may limit depending on uh, where we go if the questions deal with what he testified to previously. It's primarily to cross-examine um, based on the new testimony. However, 906.11 also says this, a witness may be cross-examined on any matter relevant to any issue in the case, including credibility. It does say in the interest of justice, the judge may limit cross-examination with respect to matters not testified to on direct. So I'll give you some leeway, um, and I'll trust the state will make appropriate objections, and I'll rule on them if and when they're made. Because I'm not intending to go too much back into the previous testimony, but I think it made a few points from the earlier testimony I may come into fair. play, and I just wanted to make sure. I think that's fair. That wouldn't be a problem. I think that's fair, sir. Um, also, uh, really quick. Um, I did look over some uh, information provided by the prosecution as, as far as uh, uh, the pretrial offer that I did not have knowledge of until, I don't know if that was, was today, Thursday, I don't know if that was Monday or Friday or Monday, one of those days. Um, I, I'll put together, a, a, well, started to, I, I won't say it's completed, that wouldn't be fair to say. Um, I've put together a, a or started to put together a counter offer. So I just wanted to advise the court that I was putting that together. All right, thank you, sir. When, if and when you do provide that to the state, please let me know so we can make a record of that. All right, anything else? If not, then we'll have the jury brought out. Um, we do have one last uh, large nap here, Your Honor put up and face backwards like we did the other day. All right, go ahead since the jury's not here.
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I know it's a little chilly in here. I'm not sure if that will change now that we're all in here. If at any time that temperature is too cold for you, let me know, and we can have that adjusted. All right. Uh, Attorney Opera, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state would recall Detective Tom Casey. <coughs> good morning, Detective Casey. Please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and Teresa will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Please state your first and last names for the record. Thomas Casey. <coughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Attorney Albert. Thank you. Uh, Detective Casey, uh, I'd like to begin by asking you to um, refer to the item behind you. There's a large poster board there. If you could please uh, place that on the easel and identify the exhibit number for the court. It's exhibit number 15. Thank you. And we've had testimony about this exhibit throughout the trial. Is that right, sir? Yes, we have. All right. Your role in this case uh, was what, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. I mean, initially, I was on traffic control for the parade. Uh, shortly after the incident happened, I was assigned as lead detective for the case. Were you the uh, individual who created this map, State's Exhibit Number 15? Yes, I did. Okay. And I would like you to um, talk a little bit about uh, how victims were identified in this case. Objection leading. Um, overall, foundational, the witness may answer. So at least initially, can you tell us like in the, the day or two after the parade, what happened? Objection leading. Overall, you may answer. So initially, um, that night, we knew that the victims were taken to different hospitals um, around the area, uh, generally five different hospitals. So at the beginning, um, we began by having detectives assigned to each hospital. Um, Waukesha Memorial Hospital received the most patients, so they also had a lieutenant that was assigned there as a team leader. As the patients came in, they were identified by detectives. Um, the hospitals also provided us with a list of patients that they had, and we went through those lists and tried to identify people that came in and were being treated. And then eventually were there follow-up interviews conducted with these individuals? Yes, there were. What if the individual was a person under the age of 18? Objection leading. Uh, overruled, you may answer. If the person was a minor under 18, then we would reach out to their parents, talk to the parents, um, some of the kids were able to talk to us, but we got the majority of their statement from their parents. Okay. And do you believe that the names on Exhibit 15 uh, truly reflect all the injured victims that you were able to identify in the course of this investigation, sir? Objection, Uh No, I do not. Hold on. There's been an objection. Um, it's overruled, and um, the witness will repeat his answer. No, I do not. Can you explain that? Objection leading. Oh, overall. Just because of the scope of the investigation, we had so many people that were hurt, we had to come up with some kind of parameters to limit the people that we would call victims. Uh, one of those parameters is that they had to receive treatment at a hospital. Uh, another one is that they had to be in the street when their injuries occurred. So there are some people that um, <laughs> were injured, maybe on the sidewalk, trampled by the cr crowd. <laughs> Or received the injuries that they didn't get hospital care from you know and uh, unfortunately I learned later on there's even a person that was in the band that somehow we missed her being reported that she received a broken leg so there are some that are not on the map but all the people that have been charged are on the map so you mentioned people on the sidewalk we did have some spectators testify in the trial correct objection leading um, overruled foundational Correct, but they were more in the roadway or on the curb, not on the sidewalk or not running away from the incident when it happened. I see. So, was in your mind when you were um, leading this investigation trying to identify victims, what was the importance of the SUV in the injuries that were caused? Objection leading. Um, sustained us to the form of the question, please rephrase. Why 
why were the spectators that are on this map included? Because they were directly contacted by the SUV that came down the street. If a person were injured because they were trampled by the crowd, are they on this map? We Just exclude both. Um, overruled the detective may answer. Those people were excluded from the map. There were some people like that, right? Yes, there were. Okay. Um, please make Sorry. sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll allow his answer to stand. Um, next question. All right. I'd like to um, put up for you exhibit number 32, which has been previously identified. I'm sorry, admitted. I'm sorry, you said 32? Yes. yes. You said yes. 32? Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just missed it. <coughs> just to the witness or published? Because it's, it's been received. Yes, we are, we are going to publish this, Your Honor. Go ahead. But Permission I granted. Okay, thank you. And while we're waiting for it to come up in the jury box. Um, I don't have it on my screen. It may take a second. Hold on. If it's not, let's check the cables. We don't have it either. I can see it. The witness can see it. Mm -hmm. um, go out it. Thank you for letting us know, sir. It's just the front tables, back tables on, Your Honor. Um, hold on. Stop source for a second. Anything? Yeah. You can see it on the screen, though, right, sir? On the there's screen, obviously, on the far side of the courtroom, and then to your right. It's always better on here because I. I, I understand. We'll get our tech guy over here to look at it, but it's previously been received, and we can see it on the two other monitors. So for now, we're going to continue. If there's anything new, I'll make sure to pause. Go ahead. Uh, Detective Casey, I want to focus your attention specifically as to the extreme dance team. We heard um, testimony about several of the girls on the team being struck and injured. Do you remember that testimony, sir? Yes, I do. Um, overruled, it's foundational. The answer may stand. Do you know if there were other people associated with the extreme dance team that were injured? Objection speculative. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I do. And do you know their, the names of these people? Objection, yep. you're saying. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I do. What were their names, please? Kathleen Objection. Palmeyer. Speculation. Um, overruled, he may answer. Go ahead, sir. Kathleen Palmeyer. Jennifer Stover and Mitchell Lampine. What was their role with the dance team? Go ahead. Uh, Jennifer and Kathleen were support people. Um, Jennifer's daughter was marching the parade. And then Mitchell was there to hand out candy with his stepmom. Okay. I'm going to uh, now play. It's still not being displayed on our tables, Your Honor, but. It is displayed on the two large monitors in the courtroom. So do I have permission to proceed? Which exhibit? This is 32. Oh, yes. If we get to a new one that hasn't previously been received, then yes. I will okay. pause to get All the right. tech people in. All right. And Go ahead. Objection bailiff. is to relevancy. Overruled. The bailiff confirmed it's on in the jury box, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, please play. Um, from the uh, 32 second mark, I'm sorry, 35 second mark to 47 seconds. How long is the, how long is the exhibit? Looks like it's a minute 23 according to what I can see on my monitor. It is 123 total. We're only playing this uh, 12 second clip from 35 to 47. Thank you. And please pause. Do you see any of the individuals you were just testifying about enter the screen, sir? Objection, speculative. 
Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I do. Could you identify them uh, by using the touch screen? Objection, lady. Overruled, he may answer. I'm going to draw one big circle. Okay. It has two individuals, it has Jennifer and Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen has the red jacket on, and directly to her left would be Jennifer in the black jacket. Okay. A little hard to see right now, but as yeah, they... It's very hard to see. Um, keep walk, going. Could you see two people walking there, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, please clear the screen and continue playing. And pause. And I'm sorry, because I can't see the counter, Your Honor. One, uh, it is at 44 seconds. 44 seconds, thank you. Paused at 44. Do you see anybody else that you just testified to in the, uh, in the video at this point, sir? Objection, speculation. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, I do. And who is that? Lee. Mitchell. Objection. Overruled. Mitchell Lampine. Please circle Mitchell. Do you know Mitchell's approximate age? Objection, speculative. Overruled. I believe he's about 10. Okay. All right, we can uh, take down 32. Did, um, this video goes on to show the red SUV drive through the Extreme Dance Team, correct? Objection, leading. Um, it's foundational. Yeah. Overruled, it's foundational, it's previously been received, go ahead. Yes, it does. To your knowledge of this video, sir, did uh, those individuals, Mitchell and uh, Ms. Stover and Ms. Pellmeyer, remain along the left side of the road there as the SUV <coughs> went through? Objection, Lee. Overruled, the witness may answer. They were hit by the vehicle and then moved to the left. Let's take a pause for a second. We yes. Our IT experts. Hopefully I can get this figured out. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Go ahead. Could you put something on the screen that's okay to you for the moment? Next one will be 132 if you want to. Oh, I'm sorry, 55. It's on our screen. It's on now. Okay. Hold okay. on, let's make sure. Do you have it now, yeah. sir? Yes? Yes. Oh, good, great. It's on, the, it's on mine, it's on the witness. All right. Yeah. Just Thank like you. real life. You call the help desk and they show up and it, oh, now it works. Yeah. Jury monitors were working. It's not, uh, hold on, let's make sure. It was just working. There's a delay. It can take 30 seconds. What, what is it? Is this this one? Uh, this is 55. Uh, All right, it's not. Very good. We're up and working. And 55 has previously been received, so go ahead. All right. Objection to the relevancy of 55. <coughs> um, noted. Overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Upper. Uh, Detective Casey, Exhibit 55. Uh, can you see at the end of the road there, or the top of the screen, what unit is involved in Exhibit 55, please? Yes. Please tell us. Objection leading. Overruled. It is the dancing grannies that are approaching from the right. Okay. And uh, one of the Dancers, we have heard testimony that was involved with the grannies was a woman by the name of Lola Hospital. Is that correct? Objection, Lee. Overruled. It's foundational. The witness may answer. Yes, she was. Is there video showing this hospital being struck by the SUV? Objection, Lee. <coughs> Sustain us to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Sure. Is the exhibit, you've seen exhibit 55 before? Yes, I have. Are you able to identify Ms. Hospital? I'm sorry, yes, Lola Hospital in Exhibit 55, sir. Objection, Lee. Overall. Yes, I am. All right. We're going to play the clip, Your Honor, from uh, 
point, I'm sorry, from four seconds to eight seconds at 50% speed, and it is zoomed in um, on the middle of the road where the dancing grannies are located. All right, go ahead, thank you. Please describe for the jury what you just saw in the video, sir. Objection leading. Overruled. I saw the red SUV <coughs> driving westbound on Main Street, approaching the Dancing Grannies, and hitting Lola Hospital, and then striking two other Dancing Grannies. When you say hitting Lola Hospital, what did you see? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled. You may answer. I saw the left side of the car come in contact with her, and then she, her body moved to her left after. Did Ms. Hospital report any injuries to the Waukesha Police Department? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, she did. <coughs> All right, sir. Uh, I'd like to now ask uh, that Exhibit 118 be published for the jury. This has previously been admitted. Permission granted. Objection to the relevancy of 118. It's previously been received. Go ahead. Sir, do you recognize the item shown in Exhibit 118? <coughs> yes, I do. And in addition to the photograph, have you had an opportunity to examine that item or items? Objection, me. Personally. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I have. And uh, Mr. Johnson from the crime lab testified about these items yesterday, but I'd like you to tell the jury what you remember of these items, please. Objection, leading the form of the first part of the question. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. So this is the red SUV that was used in the parade attack. This is a picture of it taken after. I remember a hood from a white jacket and a hat, a black hat with snowflakes on it, being um, pressed in between the hood and the windshield and the windshield wiper of the vehicle. Objection to it being called an attack. I think that's a, a, a disparaging remark for the record. Your objection is noted and the answer will stand. Um, I will instruct the witness to simply describe what he, he is seeing without further characterizing it as it will be up to the jury to determine the facts in this case. Go ahead. Thank you. When you saw these items on the hood of the red SUV, did you later come to uh, recognize where they may have come from? Objection, lady. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. What did you determine? I determined that they were the jacket hood and hat that Virginia Sorensen was wearing while she was walking in the parade. I'd like to display to the witness only, please, Exhibit 177. This has not yet been received, Your Honor. All right, go ahead, please. Is 177 on your screen, sir? Yes, it is. And. Uh, what do you see in Exhibit 177? Objection leading. Overruled. I see two dancing grannies carrying a Milwaukee dancing granny sign, and the woman on the left is Virginia Sorensen, and she's wearing a black hat with snowflakes, wearing a white jacket with a hood on it. Uh, move to admit 177 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection to the relevancy. The objection is overruled. Exhibit 177 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Is it 177? 177, yes. Go ahead. 
And if the jurors would let me know when it's in the jury box as well, please. All right, thank you, it's there. And again, just so we're clear on the record, please circle Virginia Sorensen in the hat in this picture. Objection leading. Overruled. That is Virginia, and then this would be the <coughs> hat and hood that I believe was found on the SUV. Okay. Detective Casey, there were many videos that have been shown to this jury, correct? Objection. <coughs> it's foundational, Your Honor? Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, there have been. To your knowledge, are there any videos that display the license plate of the red SUV as it goes along the parade route? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, there are. Is it possible to capture a screenshot from <clears throat> those videos to see the license plate of the red SUV along the parade route? Yes, there are. <laughs> I'd like to uh, display for the witness only, <coughs> Exhibit 150. Go ahead. Is 150 on your screen, Detective? Not yet. Okay. <coughs> it is now. All right. Do you see uh, Exhibit 150? Yes, I do. Please uh, describe what you see in Exhibit 150. Objection leading. Overruled. I see the red SUV that was driven through the parade route, and it's at the time when it was contacting the Waukesha South band members. In that photo, you can read the license plate number. Do you believe this uh, photo is a true and accurate representation of the events of the day? Yes, I do. Move to admit 150 and permission to publish. Objection. How does this go to investigation? Um, overruled. Investigation. Exhibit 150 is received. Permission to publish is granted. <coughs> the image is a little blurry, correct? A tad. Can you please... Uh, Point out the license plates in the photo and read it for the jury. Is it okay if I certain what? Yes. Overruled. You may do so. That is the license plate number, and I read ADP 9256. All right. Now I'd like to show to the witness only number 151, please. Go ahead. Please describe 151. Oh, please clear the screen, Madam Clerk. This photo is of the red SUV on the parade route. It's just a photo taken just prior to the Barris Logistics float, and the band director is in the lower left-hand side of the video. It shows the red SUV with the license plate number displayed. Do you believe this photo represents a true and accurate depiction of the events of the day? Yes, I do. Move to admit 151 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection to the red receipt. Exhibit 151 is received permission to publish. Granted, the objections noted and overruled. I recall this. Basically, they had 140 exhibits. How did we get this many? <coughs> Keep going, Attorney Upper. Detective, please describe what you see in uh, 151. I think you did describe it. Strike that. Um, please circle the license plate and read it for the jury. Objection leading. Overruled. ADP 9256. Thank you. <coughs> it's still not up. Okay, I'm sorry. Gotta wait for the 
Detective Casey, during your investigation, did you uncover any other videos linking Mr. Brooks to this same vehicle with this same license plate? Objection, I don't consent to be called their name and he's leading the witness. I'm um, overruled as to both counts, you may answer. Yes, we have. Could you describe this video <coughs> for us, please? Objection, leading. Overruled. There's a video that we obtained from social media that shows Mr. Brooks standing next to the SUV and you can clearly see the license plate number on the vehicle. I believe the video was taken sometime prior to November 21st, 2021. Okay, I'd like to uh, display for the witness only exhibit 175, please. Go ahead. Please identify 175. This is a uh, relevancy. Um, overruled. You may answer. This is a photo. There's two individuals in the photo. The individual on the left, I know to be the, <coughs> the person referred to as Daryl Brooks. It displays the a vehicle, a red Ford, and it has the license plate number, which is displayed in the photo. What is the source of this photo? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. We obtained it through social media. Okay, I mean, it, this is a photo versus a video. Objection this is the photo leading. taken from Hold the on. video. <laughs> Um, I understand the objection. It's sustained. It's foundational. This particular question, the witness may answer. Go ahead. This is a rude sustained. Overruled. <laughs> you said sustained. What did I say? Yes, yeah, you did. Sorry. <laughs> I meant it's overruled. The witness may answer. Sorry. I'm taking notes. I was writing the word source, and I think that's why I did that. In any event, go ahead and answer. Sorry about that for any confusion I may have caused. This is a screenshot taken from a video. Uh, move to admit 175 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection to that. Um, what's the relevancy? I, I don't see the alleged defendant in here. Um, your objection is noted. It is overruled. And Exhibit 175 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Where's... The jury would also let me know when it's in the jury box monitors or on the jury box monitors. All right, go ahead. Detective Casey, is a uh, person you know as Daryl Brooks in this photograph? Objection, I'm consent to being called their name and leading the witness. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, he is. Please circle or X or mark in some fashion. How do you know that's Daryl Brooks there? His back is to us. Objection, leading. Overruled. I've watched the video in its entirety and I have seen his face in the video. <clears throat> okay, that can go down, please. Detective Casey, in total, how many videos do you think were collected by the Waukesha Police Department during this investigation? Objection, speculative. Overruled. You may answer. We have at least 65 to 75 files. Some of those files contain multiple uh, videos, photos could be 10 each, so I would say probably three to 400 videos we have collected. What were the source of those videos? Um, some of the videos came from uh, different people that were at the parade. Some of them are from city-owned cameras, and some of them are from fixed uh, surveillance photo, uh, fixed surveillance systems um, from businesses that were in downtown Waukesha. Were all of the videos that were available shown to this jury? No, we're not. Overruled. You may answer. 
No, they were not. Have you personally observed and uh, reviewed each of the video files available in this case, sir? Jason, speak with you. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I have. To your knowledge, sir, did any video ever show a different person behind the driver's wheel of that red SUV? Jason Leedy. Overruled the witness may answer. I have never seen anyone driving the vehicle besides the defendant in any of the videos that I looked at. In any of the videos, were you ever able to see multiple people inside the vehicle? Jason Spakely to you. Overruled. The witness may answer. None of the videos that we have looked at showed anyone else in the vehicle. Do any of the videos at any point show the red SUV coming to a stop, a complete stop, along the par parade route? Objection leading is oh. Overruled. The witness may answer. I've never seen a video that shows the vehicle slowing or stopping while it was on the parade route. Do any of the videos show the driver of the vehicle exit the vehicle to check on a person who had just been struck by the vehicle? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. I never observed in the videos the driver of the vehicle to stop and check or exit the vehicle on anyone. There was testimony earlier in this case about witnesses observing multiple people <coughs> running from the car. Do you remember that? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I remember that. Were there multiple reports like that, sir? Initially, there were some reports like that. When the vehicle was found on Maple Street, you weren't there. Correct, your lady. Oh. Overruled, his answer may stand. Do you know what police activity occurred when the Maple, when the vehicle was found on Maple? Objection, speculative, just stated he wasn't there. Overruled, the witness may answer. He was asked, what does he know? Yes, I do. Please tell the jury what happened when the SUV was found on Maple. Jason Lee. Overruled, the witness may answer. Initially, Officer Moss went. He secured the vehicle, did not find anybody in the vehicle. There was an initial report that saw some other people running from the area of the vehicle. Um, after that information was given back to us, we sent detectives down to the area to investigate further to see if we could corroborate and, and find out if that was true or not. After that investigation, uh, did you have other suspects or just one person? Objection, leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Uh, Based on the information of what everybody saw on the parade route, and then the detectives that went back down to Maple Avenue where it interviewed the people that reported the people running, our investigation determined that there was only one person in the vehicle and there was no other suspects that we were looking for. At some point in your investigation, Detective Casey, were you given a Ford key? Lee. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I was. What was your understanding as to the source of that key? <clears throat> My understanding that that key was taken from Mr. Brooks when he was taken into custody and turned over to Detective Stern and Detective Carpenter. Objection. I don't consent to being caught that name for the record. Noted. Overruled. How did you get it? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. He just, he just stayed, I got it. Overruled, he may answer. Detective Stern brought me the key the morning after the incident. Did you do anything with the key? Yes, I did. Tell the jury what you did, please. Objection, leading. Overruled. 
At that point, the vehicle was at the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department Secure Storage Facility. Um, Mr. Johnson was over there uh, processing the vehicle. I went there and I took the key with me and I checked the vehicle to see if the key would work in the car. What did you find? Objection leading. Overruled. I found that the key worked the door locks to unlock the car. I also put the key in the ignition and it turned the ignition lock. Thank you. Detective Casey, you've heard uh, testimony about the manner in which the defendant was identified by the name of Daryl Brooks. Do you recall that testimony, sir? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. He's leading the witness. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Did you endeavor to verify the identification of the subject you had arrested for this incident? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, I have. Did you verify his identity by the name of Daryl Brooks? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I have. How did you do that? Objection, leading. Overruled. There were a couple different ways. Uh, one way is when a person is taken into custody, we take their fingerprints. We check that against other records that are kept by the state. Those fingerprints matched Daryl Brooks. I've also spoken to three women that he has child, children with. They verify that that is na his name that he has always gone by. I have also spoken to his mother, which states that that's the <coughs> name that he has gone by always. I'd like to put on the screen for the witness only exhibit 88. Go ahead. Do you see exhibit 88, sir? Yes, I do. Objection to this with, with the relevancy. Overruled. Go Can ahead. You, Grounds for an overrule. Relevant. In what way is it relevant? Uh, to the counts alleged in this case. Go ahead. Can you please identify exhibit 88, sir? This is a bail bond through Milwaukee County Circuit Court for Darrell Edward Brooks, the date of birth of 221-82. To your knowledge, uh, was Mr. Brooks on bail through a Milwaukee County case on the date of November 21, 2021? Objection, leave. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, he was. And what is the date of this bail form? Please uh, believe it's near the bottom. The date on the bottom is overruled. The witness may answer. 221 of 2021. Was Mr. We'll strike that. By classification, can you tell us the level of charges that Mr. Brooks was pending on for this bail? Objection. You've Over already made a ruling on it. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. All the charges that I see in here are felonies. To your knowledge, was this bail in full force in effect on November 21 of 2021, sir? Objection. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, it was. And in the middle of the form, do you see the conditions of bail that were set upon Mr. Brooks? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. And I'm looking under paragraph B, the third bullet. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Could you please read that bail condition to the jury? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. The same. Defendant shall not commit any crime. Thank you. Move to admit number 88, Your Honor. Objection. 
Exhibit 88 is received. Like to display for the. Uh, overruled and permission to publish. I'm sorry, I did not seek to publish this, Your Honor. Oh, all right, turn that off. Request the legal finding of fact for that. The objection is noted, it's overruled. <coughs> Continue, Attorney Opper. Thank you. I'd like to display for the witness only Exhibit 89. Go ahead. Sir, can you please identify 89? Objection. Overruled. Overruled. This is a. This is been speculated, uh, stipulated to as well. How's it evidence? How's it being admitted? The objection's noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. I request a legal finding of fact for that to your honor. Noted. Overruled. Go ahead. This is a bail bond through Milwaukee County Circuit Court for Daryl Edward Brooks with the date of birth of 221 of 1982. Is this a different case than uh, what was displayed in Exhibit 88? Objection, Lee. Uh, overruled. <coughs> yes, it is. Are you able to make any observations about the level of charges uh, related to this case, sir? Objection, Lee. Overruled. It appears that there's four charges, two of which are felonies. Okay. And on the bottom of the form, can you tell the date that this bail was issued? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Say it's 11 11 of 2021. The uh, directing your attention again to that same location in the middle of the page under paragraph B, the third bullet. Could you please read the conditions of release that were set by the court in that case? Objection, Lee. Overruled. The witness may answer. Defendant shall not commit any crime. To your knowledge, sir, was this bail in full force in effect on November 21 of 21? Objection, statement to you, Lee. Overruled as to both. The witness may answer. Yes, it was. <coughs> Finally, sir, I'd like to. Uh, Put up one last uh, item for you, or two items. One second, please. I'd like to display for the witness only Exhibit 13. Objection. What's the relevancy of this? How does it say any foundation to testimony? I'll give the state some leeway to establish that. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, do you recognize uh, the, well, can you tell if Exhibit 13 is a video, sir? Yes, it is. Okay. Have you seen this video before, sir? Objection to Overruled. Still relevancy. Um, relevancy. The state is asking the foundational questions. The objection's a bit premature. Um, I'll take it under advisement. Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Yes, I have. What does this video depict? Objection, Lee. Overruled. The witness may answer. Objection, speculative. Overruled. Go ahead. This video <laughs> depicts the backyard at 4014. North 19th Street in the city of Milwaukee. It also, that's the ad address of Dawn Woods, the mother of Daryl Brooks. And on the, low, on the lower left hand corner, you can see a Ford Escape. In the lower Jackson, right. Um, I'm going to strike that. How, how does he know? <coughs> what? Um, the objections noted, overruled. You can <coughs> ask him on cross examination. You can question him about that. Go ahead. In the bottom right-hand corner of the exhibit, do you see a date and time stamp for this video, sir? Objection, Lee. Overruled. <laughs> yes, I do. What does it say? It says 11 slash 21 dash 2021, and then it says 13 colon 26 colon 18. What, is, what do those numbers represent, sir? Objection, Lee. Overruled. 
to me it mean that the video was taken on November 21st, 2021 at 1.26 p.m. And uh, do you believe this video is a true and accurate representation of the events of that afternoon at that location, sir? Yes, yeah, you stay with it. Um, sustained, if you could lay a little more foundation. Sure. Please. How did you uh, come into possession of this video, sir? The defendant's mother provided it to us. And uh, do you know approximately when it was obtained? Objection, speak to you. Overruled. The evening of November 21st, 2021. Do you know if uh, the defendant's mother was cooperative with police in providing the video? Objection. Relevancy. Overrule. The witness may answer. Yes, she was. Do you know if the video was provided to police <coughs> when asked? Objection. Overrule. Yes, it was. Do you have any reason to believe that the video was altered or modified in any way before it was provided to police? I do not. Move to admit 13, Your Honor, and permission to publish. Objection. Is relevancy. Noted. Overruled. Exhibit 13 is received. Permission to publish is granted. For the record, this is a video. It's 49 seconds in duration. We're going to play it in full. There is no audio, and it will be played at normal speed. <laughs> Oh, hang on, don't play yet. Yes, let, if the jurors would let me know when the monitors are displaying the video. All right, go ahead. Detective Casey, were you able to see any emblem on the front grill of that vehicle as it drove away? I would have to look at it again. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this. Ask you this. Did you see any damage to the front end of that vehicle as it drove away? Objection leading. Overruled. I did not. Okay. I'm going to uh, put up State's Exhibit 14 now, please. Go ahead. Just to the... Yeah, just to the witness only, please. Thank you. Do you recognize Exhibit 14, sir? <laughs> yes, I do. What is the source of Exhibit 14? This is a still shot taken from the video. The same video we just saw, number 13? Yes. Okay. Move to admit 14 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection, the objection's overruled. Exhibit 14 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Sir, do you see Daryl Brooks in this photograph? Objection. I don't consider to be in court that name again for the record. Noted. <clears throat> overruled. Yes, I do. Can you identify or, excuse me, shh, excuse me, describe the clothing items that you see him wearing in this photograph? So it's not in the jury oh, it's not in the jury box yet. I'm sorry. You can state your objection, though. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Mr. Brooks is wearing a red T-shirt, blue jeans, and he has 
blue colored flip flops on with white socks. And what's the uh, date and time stamp for this photograph, please? It's 11 2021 at 13 26 colon 08 hours. And that's what time, sir? Jason Lee. In, uh, on the 12 hour clock. Jason Lee. Overruled. That would be 126 p.m. Any other questions, sir? <coughs> Lee Cross. <coughs> and the two exhibits we just watched, 13 and 14. Do you see anyone driving a vehicle? No, I do not. Do you know if anyone's in the vehicle at the time that you see it pull away? I would assume based on my training experience that when the vehicle pulled away that there was someone inside the vehicle because in order to move a vehicle you have to manipulate the controls, the shifter, the brake, the accelerator. So my assumption is, is that someone is inside the vehicle doing that. That wasn't the question. Do you see anyone in the vehicle? And he's already asked and answered the question is anyone can be seen. The objections, I'm not sure what the objection was, but the answer may stand. You can ask your next question. Let's go back to exhibit 175 and pull that up for the witness. Would the state please pull that up? <clears throat> witness only or published? Published. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Jurors, let me know when it's in the jury box as well. Just, Go ahead. It's in the jury. You just testified that this was the alleged defendant. How do you know that? Can you see a face? Which question are you asking? Those were two. Can you see the face <coughs> on the circle individual in that exhibit? In this clip, I cannot see the face of the person that is circled. So how do you know who it is? I can tell who that is because I have watched this video in its entirety and I can tell that it is you based on all of my contacts with you. So why were there not any other exhibits that can give credibility to you positively identifying the individual in this video? Objection argumentative Grounds. compound sustained us to the form of the question. Is it fair to say that this is the only exhibit photo from the video? Go ahead. Can you uh, clarify the only one that is shown today or the only one that has ever been taken? The only, the one, that's, ever the only one that's being please? shown right here today. <coughs> is this the only one? that is an exhibit being shown here today. Yes, this is the only one that we've shown today. And you can tell just from this exhibit exactly who that individual is. I don't believe that was my testimony. I'm asking the question. From just looking at this, no. But I know from looking at the entire video that it's you. We're talking about this exhibit that's being shown right now during your testimony right now at this moment strictly that could you ask your object. question please i'm going to object asked and answered sustained us to the form of the question as well 
Would it be fair to say that from this exhibit 175 that they're looking at right now that you cannot tell who the circle individual is? Would that be fair to say? That would be fair to say. Can you clear the circle? Thank you, Madam Clerk. And do you recall what date you uh, viewed this video, as you call it? I have viewed this video multiple times. I don't recall the specific dates that I've seen it. Was it relatively early, early on in the investigation? <clears throat> There have been multiple times that I've watched this video. Some of them early, some of them as late as yesterday. Do you recall seeing this video uh, the same night of the incident or in the days following? I did not see it the night of, but it would be the days following that I have seen it. And at that time, did you have knowledge of who that vehicle belonged to? Yes, I did. And did you have knowledge of the usage of that video? I mean, the usage of that vehicle? I'm not sure that I understand the question. Did you have knowledge of who may have been using the vehicle? Objection vague as to time. Sustained as to the form of a question, if you could limit or perhaps direct him to a specific time frame regarding the use of the vehicle. At the time of the incident? Yes. And what, and can you clear that? And what information was that? The information that I had is that the night of the incident that you, Daryl Brooks, were the person that were operating the vehicle. And who did you learn that from? And for the record, I don't consent to that name. Noted. For the overruled. record. Go ahead and answer. Can you repeat your question, please? You done with the exhibit, sir? Uh, no, I'm not. So you're withdrawing you, your question? Yeah, I'm, I'm going another route. All right, thank you. You you just testified to seeing the entire video that this steel frame uh, exhibit came from, correct? I testified that this came from the entire video, correct? You you said that you viewed the video in its entirety, correct? The entirety of what we recovered from your social media account, I'm not sure if there is a longer version someplace, but... Did you see the video in its entirety? The, the video that this exhibit came from? Yes. And are these the only two individuals that you observed in that video? They are the only two that I recall seeing in the video. <clears throat> Did you ever inquire about the identity of this individual? No, I have not. Can you clear that circle? Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Would it be fair to say that from looking strictly at the exhibit that we're viewing right now, that both individuals have the same Hairstyle? It would be fair to say. Can we clear the X's and clear the exhibit? Go ahead. Thank you. We go back to exhibit 13. Uh, publish. Go ahead. The state would assist, please. 13. Um, can you play it 
Well, just 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 play it. I'll, I'll uh, tell you when to pause if that's okay. Go ahead. It's not up yet. Oh, thank you. We're gonna wait until it's in the jury box. Okay. <coughs> okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Does a reminder? It's forty-nine seconds long. I don't think I'm gonna need the. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I might. Pause. Right there, the individual that you observe. Right here. Do you see them wearing a hoodie? The person in that photo is not wearing a hoodie. Do you see a hoodie anywhere present in this vid in, in this video? No, I don't see a video or a hoodie anywhere in the video. Um, can you take the X down? From this angle, it'd be fair to say that you can see the front, very front end of the vehicle, correct? That is correct. Can you see any windows or see inside the, the vehicle at that time? Or at the time that we're looking at right now? You cannot see inside the vehicle at this time. So it would be fair to say that just by looking at what we're looking at now, you wouldn't know if anyone's already inside the vehicle. This has been asked and answered, Your Honor. Um, I'll allow it. The witness may answer. This is a, diff a whole different? Uh, I'm allowing it. Go ahead. That is correct. From this video, you cannot tell if anyone else is inside the vehicle. So it would be fair to say that you, you're not sure? It's fair to say that I am not sure. Can we pull this down? Whoa, wait, wait, I'm sorry, Keith. Pull that back up for one second. Same exhibit. Same Go exhibit, ahead. 13. All right. The state would put that Get, back right. on display. Got, and there you go. The, do you want any wait. more of a plate or just the still? We waiting for the jury or do they? It's up. Um, no, we don't need it played. Do you need to, it to go to a certain point? Yes. All right, do you know what point? I'm, I'm, I'm about to do it right now. Looking at this house right here, do you see an address posted anywhere on this house? In the photo that you circled, no. So it would be fair to say that you don't know the address of this, of this house? That is incorrect. You just said that you don't see an address posted anywhere in this house. So from the vehicle, I mean, strike that, not the vehicle. I'm still looking in the corner right here. From the video that we're viewing right now, do you see an address posted anywhere on this house? I do not see an address posted in this photo. So judging by this, well, actually, it's a video, but judging by this video, how can you know the address of this, of this house? Because I've been at this house before to talk with your mother. I've seen the address on the front of the house. Judging by yeah. this video. Hold on. You have to let him finish because that was not the question you asked. You asked him how he knew. He can answer. Go ahead, Detective Casey. I have been at this address before. I have spoken to your mother. I have been in the backyard of the residence. I've seen the address on the front of the house. I know this to be your mother's house. I recognize from this photo to be your mother's address at 4014 North 19th Street. You recognize the house or the address? Because we don't see an address in this video. I recognize this house to be that address from being and, there. And had you already been there, as you say, and talked to people, as you say, before you viewed this video? I believe that I saw the video first and then I was at the address. So at the time that you saw this video, you didn't know whose house that was? Um, that would be an incorrect statement. You just said that you saw the video first before going to the house. Did you or did you not say that? Would that be fair to say? I guess I'm a little confused in your question. 
we received the video. We know from getting from the mother that she said that that is where she lives. So I knew that this was where she lives when I watched the video. That I'll, was clarified I'll, for me. I follow you, but that that clarification wasn't stated before. So that's fair from the clarification of how you just clarified it. Can you clear the circle, please? With this, uh, this exhibit. Uh. Yeah. All right. We'll take it down. Thank you. You made reference to uh, a key being found. Did you yourself find that key? No, I did not. Did you? Were you at the scene where the key was found at the time it was found? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say that you were told that a key was found? Yes, I was told that a key was found. So it would be fair to say that you went off of what you were told. You actually <coughs> you actually didn't observe this with your own eyes. What are you speaking of? The key being found. That's correct. I was told by two officers who I've worked with for a long time, and I trust what they tell me to be accurate. You made reference to there being a couple, what's the word you used, a couple ways to identify individuals. And you stated uh, that you had spoken with uh, the, the mothers of the alleged defendant's children. Would that be fair to say? I believe I said I spoke with the mother of three of your children. At that time, was the alleged defendant already in custody? <coughs> yes, he was. Wouldn't it have been easier to just use the um, fingerprints that were already obtained? Um, like I said before, the fingerprints was one way. We also verified it talking to his family members that his identity. Any reason why, what, or let me back up. Is it fair to say that there were there was more confirmation needed to identify the alleged defendant at that point, seeing as how the fingerprints were already obtained? Uh, we were just being thorough. We were certain that it was Daryl Brooks that we had in custody based on his fingerprints and other information that we had. It was just a matter of being thorough and, and verifying the person that we had and the name that he goes by. It'd be fair to say fingerprints are pretty accurate though, correct? Would that be fair to say? I think that would be fair to say. So it would also be fair to say that there wouldn't be any reason why the alleged defendant that was in custody would be someone else. Wouldn't that be fair to say? Objection, that's compound and difficult to follow. It's not compound. Uh, it's sustained not us to the to form follow. of the question, sir. Please that rephrase. was very clear. Sustained us to the form of the question. And where did the interviewing of uh, the mothers of these, these children take place, if you recall? I suppose, spoke to Jessica Macklin in Iowa at her residence. I spoke to Angel Fitzpatrick at her residence in Manhattan Falls. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can we strike that? Why do the names have to be stated? Um. Overruled, he was answering the question. His uh, answer may stand, your request to strike is denied, and the witness may continue answering. I spoke to Angel Fitzpatrick in Menominee Falls at her residence, and I spoke to Erica Patterson 
a number of times um, at various locations about you. You said uh, one of the mothers of these children you spoke to in Iowa. Correct. Why would you go all the way to Iowa? Because initially you listed her as a witness on your witness list for court. So we went there and we wanted to verify what information she might have that she would testify to. Uh, just for the record, I don't recall listing anyone as a witness, just for the record. For the record, Mr. Brooks, you can't testify um, at this moment. That. You'll have an opportunity should you choose. I just um, wanted that clear for the record since what was can't be, said. It's struck from the record at this I, point I, I, because you're attempting to testify. And the jury will disregard that. I just wanted the record to show the that jury I had no will knowledge dis of doing that. And if the jury will disregard those statements made by the defendant that he is not testifying and it would be improper at this time for the court to receive them. Well, I don't think a Go, record should um, be next made question, sir. something that I didn't do. Next question, sir. It's ridiculous. So you, you said you went to Iowa to, to try to find out what would be testified to. Why? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Irrelevant. And calls for hearsay. Grounds. Sustained us to all basis. Next question. Was that an attempt to prepare for what might have been said? I'll allow that. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Why would there be preparation in, in, involved in someone who might testify on an alleged defendant's behalf? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Oh, overruled, I'll allow it. Uh, we went there to speak with her, so if she came and testified, there wouldn't be any surprises. We also wanted to find out if there's any background information that she had about Mr. Brooks that would be helpful in our investigation. So you made reference to not being any surprises. Would it be fair to say that there was a little worry there? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustain us to the form of the question. What, what surprises were you referring to? What do you mean by surprises, no surprises? Your Honor, I object to this entire line of questioning. This witness is not expected to testify. It's wholly irrelevant. Well, he opened the door by putting the name on the record and saying where he went. Um, I will allow one more question on this. Go ahead, you may answer. Could you re-ask the question, please? What do you mean by making sure that there were no surprises? We wanted to make sure that there wasn't any information that we weren't aware of that may come up later that would be helpful in the trial. Do you recall making an attempt to interview the child? Objection, relevance. Who was seven at the time? Sustained. Next question, please. Reason for the sustain, Your Honor? Not relevant. Well, it was the question was asked, does he recall? Sustained. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain again? Relevant. How is it not relevant? Keep going, sir. Did you interview the child? Same objection. Grounds? S sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Relevance. Why would you ask to interview the child? Your Honor, objection. Sustained. This entire line of cop questioning is inappropriate. Sustained. Move on. Mr. I would Brooks. object that trying to interview a seven year old child is. Sir, move on, please. 906 11. It's also not relevant. Assumes Very facts not in evidence. It was a tricky move. Um, 
<clears throat> you made reference to, and in, in, in regards to Exhibit 88 and 89, which were documents from an entirely different county. Do you work for Milwaukee County? No, I do not. So how did Milwaukee County, which is a different county, come into your investigation in Waukesha County? You may answer. Um, with the understanding there are some limited pretrial rulings that still are in play. Go ahead. During the I'm, normal I was, just I'm sorry for interrupting. I was I started off by saying in regards to exhibit eighty eight and eighty nine. That's how I started the question, just for the record. I know. I'm reminding the witness of the pretrial rulings. Okay. <coughs> During the normal course of an investigation, we do background on a person to see if they have any open cases or any information that would be helpful. There is a computer system that displays uh, what cases or charges are open for a person, and it is relevant because if you are charged in one county and you violate conditions of bail, you can also be charged in another county for those violations. And in reference to uh, having charges in one county and potentially being charged in another county in reference to that. <clears throat> Wouldn't you essentially have to uh, violate the conditions in one county and strictly be charged in that county? That is an inaccurate statement. You being in uh, law enforcement for, for a very long time, it would be fair to say that you're familiar with the term double jeopardy, right? I have heard the term before. And what is your understanding of what that term means? Objection, irrelevant, grounds, grounds scope of the witness's knowledge, <coughs> legal conclusion, sustained for all those reasons. So when did you become the lead investigator in this, in this matter? Uh, it was about 8.30 p.m. on November 21st, 2021. So same night? Correct. And whom were you made lead investigator by? Uh, the command staff or Lieutenant Jerry Habonic. Do you recall why you were tapped to be the lead investigator? Because I was the most qualified person and had the most experience to take care of it. That's what I've been told. Any other reasons besides that? Also because I was at the parade route a little bit earlier and I had the most information out of anyone. It took a little while for the other uh, staff to come in. So I already had a little bit of a head start with the information that I already had learned as being there at the beginning. And that would be a re uh, the information that you said you had more knowledge of than anyone else at that time. Would that be in reference to having uh, an interaction with the vehicle at some point? I would say as the totality of the situation. I was there when the car first went through. I know what the radio traffic was 
for taking Mr. Brooks into custody. There's also some decisions that were made early on on how to proceed with the case. I was also on scene downtown and took control of the crime scene initially. So a lot of those things were, decisions were made even before our command staff started coming in uh, to take over lead on the case. I mean, you referenced, um, you, were, you were there at the beginning when the uh, vehicle first entered in the parade. Uh, what do you recall about when the vehicle first entered the parade? I remember a horn beeping, a uh, red Ford Escape driving around, and then you driving into me and not stopping when I pounded on your hood and window. Driving into you, what do you mean? I meant that I was in front of your vehicle, your vehicle contacted me, pushed me off to the side, and continued driving without stopping. Were you injured in this incident? I was not injured, thankfully. And you, you made reference to a horn beeping. What do you mean a horn beeping? I mean a mean horn. The vehicle was beeping its horn? Yes, the vehicle was beeping its horn. What would be the only time a vehicle would beep their horn? Objection, speculation. Grounds. Sustained. Calls Reason. for speculation. Do you know why a vehicle, why the vehicle was beeping their horn? Same objection, Your Honor. Do you know why you um, would beep your asked, horn? Do you know why? So I'll, he can answer that question. Could you repeat the question, please? Do you know why the vehicle was beeping its horn? I imagine that the driver was angry and wanted to get through the crowd. And how did you come to that determination? Uh, I've been driving a long time. And a lot of times people get angry, they're late, they beat their horn at you in a way that is because they're upset and they're trying to get past you. Do you know that for sure? You asked me my opinion. Yes, I, I, I did ask your opinion. Now I'm asking you, do you know for sure if the driver of the vehicle you observed was in fact angry? I assume that he was. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure. I do not know for sure, but that is my opinion, is that he was angry. And at that time, <coughs> you had no knowledge who the driver was. Would that be fair to say? Well, I had knowledge because I saw your face. I did not know your did, name. Did at you that know time. who the driver was? No, meaning had you had any prior interactions with them before this incident? That's what I mean by no. Have you had any conversations with him? Talk to him? Hold on. Some, compound move. question. Ask one. I was just giving clarification of no. You what I meant by it's no. It's a compound question. Please rephrase. Before, before you observe this vehicle, as you say, and this driver, that you, as you say, did you know them? I have no memory of meeting Mr. Brooks before that afternoon. So it would be fair to say that you're assuming something that you don't know. Would that be fair to say? Objection, compound, vague, and argumentative. Sustained. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. How would you know how someone's feeling if you don't know who they are? Your Honor, he opened the door to this. It's asked and answered. The witness has given his opinion. It's clear. Grounds. I object. Um, Improper question. Grounds. I will allow the witness to answer why he came to that conclusion. Go ahead. Like I said before, I've been driving a long time, and a lot of times when people are beeping their horns, it's because they're late, they're angry at something that something happened, and that's why I concluded that the person was probably angry. So it would be, would it be fair to say that another reason why a vehicle would beep his horn would be to alert people to the presence. Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant speculation. Grounds. Um, I'll allow it based upon his training and experience, he may answer. It's a possibility. And did you 
hear this beep beep before the vehicle approached you? Yes, I did. You may you may reference to and I'm referring to the the uh, ring the ring video obtained <coughs> in exhibits 88 or I'm sorry the ring video obtained in exhibits 13 and 14 you may reference to obtaining that the same night of the incident. Do you recall saying that? Yes, I recall saying that. And it would be fair to say that you yourself have been present for all testimony. Would that be fair to say? That is not correct. How so? I was sick one day and I was not here. Well, I'm, I'm referring to, let me clarify. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. Uh, pertaining to all testimony since trial began, you've been present for all testimony. Would that be fair to say? I believe I've seen most of it. Do you recall testimony of And I'm referring to, again, so we're clear for the record, Exhibits 13 and 14, <coughs> ring footage that was obtained by the owner of 4014 North 19th Street that you testified to obtaining the, the ring uh, footage the same night. Were you aware that, well, let me back up just a little bit. How were you able to obtain that? ring footage there was officers that went to freighter hospital where Don Woods Mr. Brooks's mother was working they spoke to her um, and she's the one that alerted to them that she had ring video at the house and offered to remotely download that video for them and were you there yourself I was not there myself When did you yourself speak to the owner at home? The last time that I spoke to Dawn Woods was on August 8th of this year. Uh, I may have spoken to her a few times before that. I don't recall the exact dates. I'm, I'm referring to the first time that you spoke. I don't the recall the first time. I don't recall <laughs> the, the first date when that was. And you, you did just make reference to an August 8th date. And what was the extent of that conversation? Objection calls for hearsay. Grounds. Sustained. Hearsay. The August 8th date that you referred to, was that in, in any way follow up? Was that follow up investigation? Follow up to what? Well, you stated that you had spoken previously before the August 8th date. So the question is, was the August 8th date follow up to the investigation that you were already actively lead of? I mean, everything is related to this investigation. The so investigation continues every day. It's not end, it will not end until this trial is over. <clears throat> So what follow-up was needed at the time of the August 8th interview? I'm guessing that's what you would call it. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. 
Objection. Still calls for hearsay, Your Honor. Sustained. Why did you need to talk to Ms. Woods multiple times? Because every time we spoke to her, we got different information. And at that time, we were following up with your niece and nephew of what their testimony would be in this case. Uh, what testimony are you referring to? Because I don't recall any nieces or nephews testifying. I don't think I'm allowed to say it. I think this line of questioning is irrelevant, Your Honor. Um, I'll sustain the objection and in an appropriate break I can uh, address it further if need be. Please move on to an, a new topic, sir. made reference to uh, people who were injured at the parade inadvertently. You recall that? Yes, I do. To your knowledge, were any of those charged? My testimony before is that those people's cases were not charged. And were they seen as victims? I'm going to object to the form of that question. I think it calls for a legal conclusion, Your Honor. It does not. I ask to, I ask to his knowledge. I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. If you could please rephrase. Do you recall serving a warrant to the Waukesha County Jail on July 1st of 2022? Yes, I do. Do you recall what that was for? Yes, I do. And what was that for? Can you stay for the record in front of the jury? It was for Mr. Brooks's jail cell. And why did you serve a warrant for a jail cell? Your Honor, I did object pursuant to legal rulings previously issued in this case. I don't think this is relevant. Uh, um, I'll sustain the objection. It's not relevant. I'll certainly take it up at a later point if need be. What was the warrant pursuant to? I sustain the objection. Next topic, please. He did answer. He, I'm, I sustain the state's objection. I'm directing him not to answer. We'll take it up separately. I want to. I'll have you continue with your cross exam, and I'll take it up uh, later.
you made reference to this vehicle driving into you, but stated you were not injured. Did you file a claim in this matter? No, I did not. <coughs> do you consider yourself an injured party in this matter? No, I do not. Do you yourself know if anyone filed a claim in this matter? Can you be more specific? Do you yourself know if anyone filed a claim in this matter? Just in general? Whatever your interpretation of that will be? I would say yes. And do you know what that <laughs> claim was? Uh, I would imagine that there was a lot of injuries from the people. A lot of people had very um, extensive medical bills. I would imagine <coughs> that they would file a claim with their insurance company to have those bills paid. So you had knowledge of <coughs> what was filed to their particular insurance companies? I have no knowledge, but my assumption is that they would have filed those bills. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure? That was my testimony. Is that the answer? Yes. As lead investigator for this matter, um, where are you, to your knowledge, aware of any uh, uh, GoFundMe type of uh, type of things? Jackson in, in relevant. To I'm sorry. Uh, do you mean as it relates to? As it relates to the incident. Um, overruled the witness may answer. I have no direct knowledge but I assume that there are some GoFundMe pages out there. It's typical in something like this. And what do you mean by typical? You've seen this before? Is that what you mean by typical? We have a very loving and caring community where a lot of times when bad things happen to people, people pull together and offer financial assistance to help people. Is it fair to say that, that there's a lot of communities like that across Wisconsin? Yes, I think there are. It would be fair to say that you've worked extremely close with the district attorney's office during the entirety of this matter. Would that be fair to say? The district attorney's office has been involved in this investigation um, since the night of, so we have worked closely. So would it be fair to say extremely close seeing as how you've been present for the whole trial pretty much? Can you define extremely for me? I would like you to define it extremely. I'll answer yes if that helps. To your knowledge, do you know if it's typical for a lead investigator to sit right behind the prosecution table at a trial? Yes, it's very typical. It happens in uh, most larger cases, um, especially a case of this magnitude. There would be a court officer. Um, so yes, that's a very typical thing that happens. Have you ever done this before? 
I've done this multiple times before. And are you the only detective in the, in the investigation that uh, has that honor? Objection, vague. Grounds. So stand us to the form of the question. Are you the only detective directly involved in an investigation that sits with the prosecution? Talking about this case or any this, case? This particular or, case. You, I'm sorry, you interrupted me. Could you repeat that, please? Um, well, then he said this case. I'm referring to this case, yes. Could you re ask the question, please? Are you the only detective actively involved in this investigation that sits with the prosecution in yep. reference to this case? Yes, I'm the only person, the only detective that's sitting with the prosecution during this trial. So would you explain who the other officer is in the blue suit over here? Objection to the relevance, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained. I just want to know his role. Sustained. Next question, Reason for please. the sustain. Not relevant. He's been in the courtroom the whole trial. How is it not relevant? Mr. Brooks, next question, please. Nobody knows who he is. That should be known. Nobody it's not relevant to the issues that the jury to. needs to determine. Next question, sir. Is it, is it asking or telling? I'm assuming that's asking. You know what the other one would entail. Um, do you have a question, sir? <coughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I, I would like to get to it. Thank you. Please do so. Thank you. I, oh, I will. So seeing as how you sat with the prosecution for the entirety of this matter, it would be fair to assume that you know who the plaintiff is in this matter. Yes, I do. And who would the plaintiff be in this matter? The state of Wisconsin. Is that an entity or a living human being? It's an entity. How can an entity file a claim? Objection. Grounds. Legal conclusion. Grounds. Sustained. You are you are aware that only a living, breathing human being can actually file a claim. A, a, a entity cannot walk into anywhere and file a claim if it's not even a, a, a real person. Objection. You are aware strike. of that, right? Go ahead, Attorney Upper. Move to strike the statements by Mr. Brooks. Also object to the question that was asked at the end as irrelevant, argumentative and calling for a legal conclusion. Objection is not calling the, for a legal conclusion in any way. The court sustains the objection. The request to strike the statements made by Mr. Brooks are granted, or the request is granted. The jury will disregard the statement and the question asked for all of the reasons indicated by the stated also as a misstatement of the law. No, I, I definitely object to that, Your Honor. Your objection is noted. Um, I'm going to have the jury stand for a second. They've been sitting for quite some time, and then you can formulate your next question. I'll take, I'll take exception to that ruling. <coughs> and would like a legal finding of fact. <coughs> your objection is noted. It's overruled. And that's your judicial determination. Thank you. Be seated. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Please continue with your question. Have you ever had any interactions with this entity, State of Wisconsin? 
Mr. Brooks, under 906.11, I'm not going to allow the witness to answer. It's vague. There, there, was, no, there was no objection. Under 906.11, <coughs> I shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses. Please, next topic. These questions we, were, we addressed during the initial cross-examination of this witness. They're going to keep coming in. And I determined at that time that they weren't relevant. So next topic, They're please. They're going to keep coming in. Um, under 906.11, <coughs> sir, please move on to a new topic. They're going to keep coming in. Or the cross-examination, I will um, end. Do, do, you the, see, do you see the state of Wisconsin president in the courtroom today? Objection, argumentative, Grounds. irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Final warning, sir. Next topic or the cross-examination, I will you, you bring it you to an gotta end. Keep, you don't got to keep doing that, Your Honor. You don't got to keep doing that. It's my responsibility, sir, over this trial. I, I'm informed. And Thank I you. And Next I respect topic. that. But it's relevant for the jury to know the truth. They deserve to know the truth. Move to strike, Your Honor. Granted, the jury will disregard Regret. those last statements. Are not relevant. Mr. Brooks is not testifying. They mistake the law. I object to that. That's not lawful law. It's Noted. Not truthful. All right. Under 906.11, I am now uh, stopping the cross examination. Any redirect by the state? Objection to that, and I would like Noted. to go find an effect. Uh, Attorney Opper, any redirect? Yes, just very briefly, Your Honor. Okay. I would like to display for the witness only exhibit 178. Objection. I haven't seen the exhibit yet, so I'll take well, it under I'm, advisement. I'm, I'm objecting still because the, the. You may show it to the witness. There, there, needs, there needs to be an answer to why the, the jury's not being told information that they deserve to know. Go ahead, Attorney Alfred. Your Honor, for the record, this is a video I'm going to play about the first five or ten seconds for the witness to identify it before uh, moving on, please. And this this seems objection because this seems like a whole new exhibit. This was never mentioned before. It was never... I haven't seen it. I can't rule on it, sir, so let me I mean, see it and I'll take your objection under... I'll take the objection under before. advisement. Go ahead. I haven't seen this in any of the exhibits that I have, so how could it just be created now and be made an exhibit? Go ahead, Attorney I have Upper. all the exhibits. Go ahead, Attorney Upper. I haven't seen it yet. There's nothing on my screen that I can see. I see it's now playing. So now we're just creating exhibits now. I have all the exhibits, and this was never in it. Come on, man. All right, you can stop. Sir, do you recognize what's contained in State's Exhibit 178? Objection. Overruled. Relevancy. <coughs> Overruled. Leading. Go ahead and answer. Yes, I do. What is it? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. We still uh, we still, I'm still going to object. How is this? Mr. I Brooks, all, I ask that you honor I have all the, the ruling that I've I have made. I have all the exhibits, though, Your Honor. I have Mr. them all. Mr. Brooks. They were provided to me, and this was never in the exhibit, so how could it just be made an exhibit? I'll take this out up outside blue? the presence of the jury, but I'm going to allow can it. That, can that be stated for the record? Can that be explained? No. The jury will disregard the statements made by Mr. Brooks. They're not evidence, and the statement continues. So this exhibit shouldn't be evidence, then, because Mr. it didn't Brooks, exist before today. Mr. Brooks, the objections noted it's overruled. Go ahead. This, there was a still photo shown before of Mr. Brooks standing in front of the Ford Escape. This is the video in which that still photo was taken from. You Objection. How does he know that? Um, overruled. The witness may answer. I'll give you the opportunity to question him about it when the state's done asking the questions. Go ahead. <laughs> Where'd you get this video from, sir? Objection. Leading. Overrule the witness may answer. For Mr. Brooks' social media uh, account. Okay. Your Honor, move to admit 178 and permission to publish. Objection to the relevancy. Okay, I'll find that it's relevant. It's I'll obtained. receive exhibit 168. Permission to publish is granted. Uh, for the record, uh, it's 178, please? Your Honor. No, could you please tell me the length of the video? The length is. Two minutes, 33 seconds. We're going to play it in its entirety, but without volume, Your Honor. All right, thank you. 
And, uh, I, I object to that, and I would like to make an offer of proof for my appeal. We'll do that outside the presence of the no. jury, but I will allow the state to play it in its entirety without audio. Your Honor, I have all the exhibits they were provided. Mr. Brooks, I'll take that up along with the other two issues I still need to but address. How, but how can you play something that's not, that I didn't Mr. Even Brooks, have. I'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. This your is objections are noted. This is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Actually, uh, Your Honor, I... Change my mind. I would like to play the audio, please. This is my body. Um, I want to have it played first without, and then I'll make a ruling and I'll take that up. Um, okay, I understand. Thank you. So we will play the entire video, Your Honor, two minutes, 33 seconds. I object to that. Why, why does the whole video need to be played? Is, is this setting the foundation? It's relevant. You questioned the officer about it. You questioned the question detective about, about I his question knowledge. I him about the steel frame from the video. The video wasn't even in, in the exhibits that I received. I actually didn't even receive Mr. them. Mr. Brooks, were please stop. The jury will disregard his statements. He's not testifying. The video's playing. Play the sound. I want to hear it now. I'll address that later. We address why it is. It was created out of the blue, too. Go ahead, attorney, after the video is finished playing. Thank you. Sir, did you see during the uh, playing of that video the uh, image that was captured as a screenshot and presented to you uh, in your direct testimony as state's exhibit number 175? Objection leading. Overruled foundational. The witness may answer. Yes, I a did. Lot of, a lot of... <coughs> you were questioned on cross-examination as to your ability to identify Mr. Brooks in Exhibit 175, correct? Objection. That question was asked initially by Attorney Opper. Overruled. The yep. witness may answer. Sorry. Yes, I was. As you just watched the entire video again now in court, as states Exhibit 178, did you clearly see Mr. Brooks in that video, sir. Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. I believe there's no doubt that that's Mr. Brooks in the video and later standing next to the Ford Escape. Thank you. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. As to this particular piece of evidence only, Mr. Brooks, you may uh, ask questions of Detective Casey. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. And yeah, Noted. Do you have question. any questions for the witness? This, uh, when, when did this video, when was this made a, a exhibit? Because I don't have it. 
objection. That's not a question for the witness, Your Honor. That, so that was a question. The question. So, so when was this as to the form of the exhibit? question. When was this video made an exhibit? That is a question. I object to the question directed at the witness, Your Honor. It's beyond the scope of his knowledge. Sustained. Well, he said he saw it. But that's not the question asked. So you can rephrase your question if you want to. When did, when did you see this exhibit? When did you see it? With the understanding that you're asking when did he see the video, I will when allow the question to be asked. When did you see this exhibit? With that understanding, you may answer to Dr. Casey. Am I answering when I saw the video for the first time? Yes. Of Objection, Your Honor. Why is something always funny at that table? I, that it would be the same thing. I take that. I take that as disrespect because they were allowed to say something, and I said under my breath that was disrespect. Uh, I they would direct both the same parties thing. to avoid commentary. Okay. Well, can you do that, please, and, and admonish yes, them? Because I'm will. always Absolutely. the one getting admonished. Everyone. I take that as disrespect too. Sir, I'm good. Can I do my job? States directed to avoid laughing commentary. I didn't see it, so I can't further comment. I was looking at all these the cameras witness. in here. Don't nobody However, see nothing. However. I'm advising both parties to show Come decorum on, this is not fair. and restraint to I'll be wait. respectful of this jury's time and attention and to let them do their job by focusing on the testimony that's and exhibits and evidence that's presented. Go ahead, Detective Casey, you can answer the question about when you have seen this video prior to today. I saw the video uh, within a few days of Mr. Brooks being arrested. I've reviewed it since then a few times. I reviewed it yesterday and again this morning and now in court again. You said you reviewed it yesterday and this morning. If you had seen this video numerous times before yesterday and, to, and, and today, why did you feel the need to view it yesterday and today? Objection argumented. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Why did you need to uh, review it this morning? Objection argumentative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Because I wanted to be 100% sure of the content, and if there's any questions that were asked of it, I wanted to make sure that I would able, be able to answer them appropriately. And why was this, to your knowledge, why was this video never brought up in your earlier testimony? Objection, that's a misstatement, Grounds. Your Honor. Um, sustained it was, it was, as to it was the form of the question as to the facts not in evidence. If you have seen it numerous times before today, why did you need to see it again to make sure if any questions were asked or however you refer to it? What, what would be the need to view, view again this morning something that you had viewed numerous times before? I will see what I Well, objection, compound, asked and answered, misstatement of the facts, argumentative. Sustained. Did you view the video this morning because you knew that the video would be made an exhibit this morning? Objection, assumes facts, not in evidence. Sustained. That's to the form of the question. This is mine, by the way. This is mine, by the way. Can you clarify again why you viewed the video this morning? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. So you're going to sustain everything? It was already answered, sir. Next question, please. And I'm asking for clarification. Next question, please. I don't, I don't got no more questions, man. All right. Thank you. This is mine, Bobby. Detective, you may step down. I'll excuse what you, the jury. What you people was trying to do is not fair. Hide things from the jury repeatedly. You don't tell them all the information Mr. Brooks, they need I'm to I'm going to take up all of your objections outside the presence of the jury. I ask that you honor my decision to do that and you show courtesy and decorum. Because you asked. Mr. Brooks, please. Because you asked. That's the only reason, because you asked. I see what you people are trying to do. It's not right. It's not fair and it's not right. You can have a seat. Well, once the jury's outside of the courtroom, I'll take up the objections previously in the evidence. All right. Um, first of all, 
uh, Attorney Opera, if you can make a record as to uh, this exhibit and uh, whether it's been turned over previously. It was previously included in the initial discovery that was sent initially to the public defender's office and now we have a record uh, that, that uh, those three boxes were turned over to Mr. Brooks. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name and it was not in the video footage that I have obtained. That video was not part of it. Do you think and I would sit here and be this irritated Mr. Brooks, I need to make I a saw. record. So just please sit down. There's no need for you to stand at the moment. No, I feel like standing right now. Please sit down. I feel like standing. All right, based upon the offer of proof provided by the state, and it was provided to prior counsel, um, that's satis that satisfies me as to that issue. Um, that's I inaccurate. indicated that's I would accurate, Your Honor. Can we can we have the prior counsel testify to that then? Uh, not at I, this time, sir. I have not obtained that. Uh, right now, that was my first time seeing that as an exhibit. Mr. Brooks, I, I presume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're familiar with that video. Yes or no? What, what, what does that have to do with what we're talking because about? Because I'm going to make a finding based upon what I viewed in that video that there is absolutely no surprise to you. It appears to me, even without the video, that that's a music video, that you are in it, that the vehicle that has been the subject of this entire case, that Red Ford Escape with the plate uh, that's been testified to is in that video. That video is relevant for a number of different reasons, the first of which it goes to... Uh, identification of you, identification of the vehicle. You opened up the door uh, through your cross-exam of Detective Casey about his ability to identify you in that video. Um, and, and when I say identification of you, specifically as it relates to Detective Casey's opinion that that's you in the video, of course, it's ultimately up to the jury to determine that um, and what relevance, if any, that evidence have. but. You opened up the door for the state to show that video um, because you directly attacked the credibility of Detective Casey uh, through his knowledge of it and, and the identification by him of you in it uh, because the still image was of your back. Okay. So yeah. that opened up the door and it's proper. Um, there's absolutely no surprise to you that that video exists and uh, that is my finding as it what, relates what do you to mean that. It's no surprise to me that exists. That, that was not the issue. The issue was how was it made an exhibit at the last moment? How does it be made an exhibit out of the blue? That was the issue. The issue is to make an offer of proof on with. that because obviously they marked it as an exhibit. Well, they with all it. respect, so go ahead, you're, you're mischaracterizing what I, what I said, and that the record needs to be clear. The issue that I raised was how does this at the last minute, out of the blue, become an exhibit. That's, that offer, was the go issue. Go ahead and make your offer of proof on that. Thank you, Judge. And another uh, thing worth noting is the testimony of Detective Casey that this video was obtained from the defendant's own Facebook account as well. The court is Objection. well aware. He said social There's media. He nothing didn't say, that. He didn't say well, what it was. Sir, stop interrupting. We have to make a record of it. You've they make the interrupted multiple times. I've been abundantly patient with clear. you. Again, another interruption. So you need to be quiet and let the state make a record. Stop gesturing at me. me to be quiet? Stop rolling your eyes at me. You Stop I'm not, mumbling. I'm looking right at you. I'm not rolling my eyes. No, you I'm have looking. throughout. I've seen it I'm and looking. I've made note I'm of it. I'm looking at you. Okay, so are you asking me to be quiet or are you telling me to be quiet? Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Thank you, Your Honor. And just to indicate, Your Honor, <clears throat> this court has been abundantly patient with Mr. Brooks. He challenges the court's authority repeatedly. This court absolutely has the ability to tell him to sit down and be quiet. And you haven't done that. And I know why you haven't done that, Your Honor. And we appreciate that. He is not in control of this courtroom. You are. And he needs to respect that. This video was relevant based on his questioning of Detective Casey, as you just indicated, challenging his ability to identify the person who had their back turned to the camera in the still shot of State's Exhibit 175. Trials are fluid. When he opened the door to that, 
We came up with the video which Detective Casey testified repeatedly on direct examination and cross-examination as to how he knew that was Mr. Brooks because he had seen the rest of the video. He would not accept that. He pushed it and pushed it and pushed it until we played the video. The lyrics of that video probably would have been prejudicial. Originally, I wasn't going to ask for volume. Then I did because he pushed it again and his voice and his mannerism of speech, I thought would have assisted the jury in identifying Mr. Brooks as the person in the video with the red SUV. However, you smartly asked me to play it without the audio and I did that and then I never went back to that. This is all to the benefit of this defendant who continues to suggest and impugn the integrity of this court and this prosecution without basis. He doesn't like it because the evidence is stacking up and stacking up and whenever it does, his response is to accuse you, the court, or the prosecutors of being unethical and hiding things. There is nothing in law that prevents me from pulling something out of my briefcase right now and making it an exhibit if it's relevant. You decide what's relevant, what's admissible, not Mr. Brooks. There is no law he can cite to no law, no authority whatsoever that says I can't make an exhibit essentially on the fly if it's called for and that's exactly what just happened here. So I apologize for my tone with the court. I don't mean to direct this at the court. It is very frustrating. The court has demonstrated much more patience than I have with Mr. Brooks because again, I do not appreciate his impugning the integrity of these proceedings, of your honor's efforts to run a fair trial and of our efforts to run a fair trial. We have ethical obligations as well to be fair in this courtroom. We have respected that entirely. The reason I was laughing 30 seconds ago was because the exhibit was mislabeled. There was an extra Y and it said exhibit E, E-X-H-I-B-I-T-Y. And I turned around to the paralegal and pointed that out and we laughed over it, the word exhibit E. That was it. There has been no disrespect directed at Mr. Brooks directly in any fashion. So he can object all he wants and he has made that clear. He will continue to object and obstruct the court and obstruct these proceedings every last chance he gets. But legally, everything has been above board and proper and this exhibit is no exception. I apologize for my tone, Judge. Thank you. I appreciate that additional uh, record being made. I object to that. My previous ruling doesn't change in any way that the exhibit is relevant. Um, I indicated I would take it up because, uh, and I'm taking what the state's saying as uh, withdrawing the request to play the lyrics. That is correct. All right. Um, I have not heard them, but I'll certainly take the state uh, at its word as an officer of the court that um, it would be prejudicial based upon the lyrics that are in that video, but my decision to admit the video without audio stands. I do want to take up two other <coughs> issues. There was an objection uh, to questions regarding uh, cross-examination, so the objections were by the state. One had to do with possible, there was questioning about possible testimony with his niece and nephew and then the jail cell search issues. So Mr. Brooks, you asked the questions. Um, the state had objected. Since you're the proponent of what would presumably come in through the testimony of uh, Detective Casey, uh, what is your offer of proof as to why I should allow Detective Casey to come back on the stand and testify about his interaction? I believe it was with your mom and possible testimony of your niece and nephew. Um, it, it don't matter with Detective Casey. He, he's off the stand. He's not going back on the stand. To, no, but I told you I would recall no, I, him. I, I wanted to take it up rebut, outside the presence of the jury. To, how do I supposed to know? So are you withdrawing that, sir? How am I supposed to know? I, I think I deserve a chance to rebut what was just said. I think I deserve that much if it's a fair trial. What information 
do you want to provide to me I'll, about that last exhibit? About what last exhibit? I'm talking about the the, the audacity of the prosecution to just put that on the record when it's stating un, it's untrue. I don't know what you're talking about. What's untrue? We just heard her talk for five, ten minutes straight. Now don't nobody know what I'm talking about. I don't there was know a reference made to, what you're talking there was a about, reference sir. made to what I'm supposed to know about the evidence stacking up and this and that as if that has any bearing on what I still think and what I'm still going to present. It doesn't. Well, that's not what we're talking about at the moment. I, I made a ruling she, on she's an exhibit. She's been laughing and, and making comments under her breath the whole time during the whole trial and I never said nothing. I don't know what's being said, but I can tell that it's directed <laughs> towards me. I'm not, a, I'm not an idiot. I haven't, her to sit there, I haven't made I, any of those observations, I, I didn't sir. Say what you, I've observed, I didn't say you, Your Honor. No, no, no. What I've observed for, for her, is for as... Her, listen, please. Go ahead. For her to sit there and try to play it off as if she's not referencing to me, she must think I'm an idiot. Nobody that is very that, disrespectful to me. I haven't said anything about that until today. She's done it numerous times. What are you talking about? I don't her know what you're laughing talking about. under her breath. Her trying to cover up the microphone so they can laugh and he he and key 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 that they've been doing that the whole time i didn't Any say anything i didn't say sir, anything about it i have not noticed that what i notice are three attorneys who cover up the microphone so that they're not heard when they're conferring with each other about evidentiary issues about or about testimony so why is it always laughing and, and, and giggling i haven't noticed that? that other than the one thing you pointed out well we have we that, have cameras that's what the cameras Mr. are for. Let's refocus our attention on what we're here for, and that's okay, this trial. Okay, I, I take and that. Do you as, have anything you want to put on as, the record? I'm putting it on the record. As if I get a chance. No, you need to let me finish. As it relates to the video and my decision to admit, she it. just admitted that she just now came with the exhibit. It was not. She just said she just made it an exhibit. It that was not an exhibit before she made it one. So, do you have some legal basis, sir, for your position? I'm what do I need any. legal basis for when she just admitted on the record that she just made this exhibit up no, right she now? Didn't. That is a complete mischaracterization. Sure, she did not. That's what. So she wasn't implying that by saying that she could she did pull not anything make it out of her suitcase. So that's a figure of During, speech. Okay, so what right? is it implying to? What would that be implying to? As a how would anyone, how right, would I'm anyone in my position? I'm moving on because you're not providing would, me with any legal any, basis I didn't even finish. You, to, you told me that I can make the record. I'm intending sir, to make the well, record. Sir, as it relates to the video and my decision to admit it, do you I have just any said that you didn't even let me finish. finish. You're not letting me finish. You didn't let me finish either, Your Honor. Because you're not providing, providing me. But how do, you, how do you know I wouldn't get to that if, if I didn't finish? You're not providing me with anything from a legal basis for which I would consider changing my mind. So the state's withdrawn their request to play the audio. Then why play the video at all then? I've already made a ruling on that. You're questioning the ruling. You're not asking me to reconsider it based on any legal there basis. There should be a legal, a legal reconsideration of it. Then you need to provide me with the legal basis for that, sir. So I'm supposed to just come off that with the top, off the top of my head? Yes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> You're representing yourself. It's not ridiculous. Sir. It is ridiculous. So I was supposed to, I was supposed to already come in here this morning and say, oh, a video is going to be shown off the fly at the at the drop of a hat. Let me try to find some legal thing to combat. Mr. How am Brooks, I supposed to do you that? You open the bottom line is you open the door to it the playing it of that video. We're not talking about and the video those was doors. previously provided to you during discovery. We're not talking There's about opening those doors. We're talking no, about being fair. There's absolutely no prejudice that, to you. Your Honor, in with terms all due of respect, surprise with all due respect, incident. if I had right. done that, I am going to move on. If from I had this done topic. that, it Mr. would have been Brooks, a big thing. I'm advising you. Are you asking you me? I'm advising you, sir. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm advising you to sit down and be quiet. And if you interrupt me again, you are on notice that you will forfeit your right to be present so in you're this trial. Me content. Mr. Brooks. For the entire trial? Did you say the entire trial? I never said any such thing. You said thing. for the trial. Please? So what do you mean? I'm asking what do Mr. you mean? Mr. Brooks, you continue to that come is not, at me. I don't consent to being caught You continue day. to fight with me. I'm you not are fighting being with disrespectful. You. I'm not fighting with you. I'm not. I'm going to give you, you one, one last opportunity to, to sit down and be quiet so I can make a, a finding as it relates to other things. Are you asking me to do that? Are you asking me I don't need to ask. I'm telling you. 
Thank you. There were two other issues that came up that I advised the parties I would take up outside the presence of the jury uh, and give, if appropriate, Mr. Brooks the opportunity to ask further questions of Detective Casey. There was questioning by Mr. Brooks uh, about possible testimony and why it, it had to do with the air. It was in the context of him questioning Detective Casey about uh, speaking with Don Woods, his mother, and about a time in August, uh, and there was some reference to his niece and nephew. Um, and I sustained the objection. Um, I wanted to take it up outside the presence of the jury. That's the first issue. The second issue was the questioning of Detective Casey by Mr. Brooks related to the jail search. Do you want the opportunity? I understand what was the problem in the get-go with the question, how am I supposed to answer it now? Mr. Brooks, listen to me, please. I'm going to ask this question one more time. Man, it calls for I don't a like, yes or no. I don't no. like your tone and the way you're talking it, to me. I don't. Mr. I don't Brooks, appreciate it. Sit down. I don't care if no, you don't like I'm, my I'm tone. Gonna, You've I'm been pushing my down. buttons all day throughout this entire okay, trial. And I have showed too? the utmost of respect no, for you. you and I don't Absolutely appreciate not. you impugning the integrity of this court. If that's what I you don't. want to call it, that's fine, but it's stop not accurate. Stop talking. What you mean, stop talking? I need to make a ruling. Okay, well, I'm let's, purposely let's not talk, putting you in the to, other courtroom now. Let's talk to now. each other like adults then. Mr. Because Brooks, I've never told you to stop talking. I'm going to ask this question one more time, and if he doesn't answer it, I'll take it as a no. Do you want the opportunity to question Detective Casey regarding either his questioning or meeting up with your mom and your niece and nephew about possible testimony or the jail the search of your jail cell yes or no what was the problem with me asking the question right, about the jail cell my question we'll move on i'm, I'm trying to understand if i don't right, understand how do i know how do i know what i'm supposed to answer if i don't understand and i don't agree to a stop
the record in State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let me do that again. We are back on the record. State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. <clears throat> are there any issues related to exhibits or other things before I bring the jury back out for what I believe will be the state resting? No, Your Honor, I do believe that I did check with your clerk. Um, everything that we have um, offered and admitted matches what the court has, so I believe we are, are good on that. Um, I have one question oh, sure. about Exhibit 89, and I don't know if I missed in my notes. Um, okay. What do the party's notes reflect on whether that was received? Um, I showed that it was offered and admitted before it was published, or it wasn't published to the jury, but if not, we would move Exhibit 89 into evidence. And do you recall what Exhibit 89 is? It's Otherwise, a certified bail form? No, 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 I'm asking, oh. I'm asking Mr. Brooks. So, oh, sorry. Um, that was the second of the two bail bonds. Do you have a recollection of whether it was received? I don't. All right, then what I was know this? I objected to it. I know you objected when it was, I think, displayed for the witness who then testified about it. Um, I'll receive it and also advise the jury. Were there any other exhibits? I have one other issue on <clears throat> evidence and exhibits as well, but um, are there going to be any other exhibits that we need to tidy up the record in front of the jury with? I don't believe so. Um. I, I know at one point um, someone caught that we moved, it was either Exhibit 175 or 178 into evidence, and the court admitted either 165 or 168 on the record. So I don't know. Um, so maybe just I had think a you misspeak. Yeah. You have any recollection of that, sir? Recollection of what? Related to what the state just put on the record. Do you know what was that? What witness that was? Just that was um, Detective Casey. <coughs> look at that. Five was the screenshot taken from the video. I know I have a note that it was received and published. Mm -hmm. um, and you believe I may have just referenced it by the wrong name? I thought it was 178. I thought you referenced it by the wrong number. So it's either 175. Um, 175 was referenced as 165, or 178 was referenced as um, 168. What is one, one seventy? I know that one seventy five is what I just said. Correct. What was one seventy eight? One seventy eight was the video. The oh, that was video. the most recent one. Okay. What's the request then as it relates to when the jury comes back in? Your Honor, I just, um, there's two different ways to do this. I can um, put on the record, I have the exhibit numbers, and I can just put on the record just to verify that these exhibits have all been offered and admitted into evidence, and the courts agreeing, because we've just agreed that those are, um, your records are the same as my records, or we can clarify just if there was some confusion about exhibits 175 and 178 that were shown to the jury this morning, those 175 and 178 were offered and the court has admitted those into evidence. So however you want to. All right, sir, do you have any position on how I address this in front of the jury? 
yeah, I'm, I'm objected to him being admitted at all. Well, those objections were already addressed. I'm talking about how I addressed to make sure the jury knows they were received by the court. However you're going to do it is how you're going to do it. I don't think what i got to say much matters. Well, what you say matters, sir, but no, the fact that I've already ruled on the admissibility is not something I'm going to revisit. Uh, what i what I got to say Hold on, that does. door is... All right, it's, sometimes that door upstairs malfunctions and... All right, I didn't hear the last part of what you said. What I have to say about anything definitely doesn't matter. I take huge objection with that, sir. It's true. And it, that may be your perception, but that is absolutely not true. This court takes your positions on evidence, legal arguments, admissibility, uh, things of that nature. Um, I take all of that quite seriously. Um, but somehow it's always overruled or discarded. Sir, can I keep going because you've interrupted me once again. I, I, my perspective on all of this, sir, is when you disagree with a ruling, you interrupt, you try to debate the topic again and again, you make disparaging remarks, either directly or under your breath, that are audible. Sometimes you roll your eyes. I mean, just previous to the break, you and I were talking over each other. I couldn't really get a word in edgewise. You wanted to debate topics that I've already made decisions on. I wanted to get clarification on whether you wanted to pursue any questioning, for example, with Detective Casey. Um, I gave you multiple opportunities to answer questions directly. You chose not to do that. You directly challenged me about my authority in this courtroom. You refused to sit down repeatedly. Did I raise my voice? I absolutely did. Was I frustrated? I absolutely was. I'm sitting down. My voice is calm. I think the break was good. I hope for all it was good for me. We had had a very long morning. It was about 11.30 when we broke. It's now 11.54. <clears throat> I didn't remove you to the other courtroom, despite my repeated warnings, because frankly, I knew I was going to take a break. I just wanted to get through some issues outside the presence of the jury, which is the proper procedure for how to address objections if the record can't be done in a way that um, when a more full record needs to be made is how I'll put it. And I indicated during the cross-examination of Detective Casey, I would take your objections under advisement. I would address them outside the presence of the jury. You chose not to answer my questions, and so I moved on. So now, with you. respect to, I, I want to also address exhibits and the normal course of exhibits coming in a trial. Because I think there's some misunderstanding and certainly confusion on your part, sir, about the exhibit list that I asked the t state to file near the beginning. And that was, frankly, to assist the court and my clerk in keeping track. Most trials, the normal course of action is as long as an exhibit has been uh, provided to a party previously or in some circumstances, if not, it's rebuttal, we're not quite there yet, that as long as it's been turned over in discovery, oftentimes parties will simply have exhibits marked as they're presented in the course of a trial. There's not a legal requirement unless a judge <coughs> orders it uh, that would prohibit a party from marking a document that's been already exchanged and having it offered as an exhibit. There was nothing, nothing improper about what the state did with Exhibit 178. And I want to make that record very, very clear. As Attorney Opper stated, trials are fluid. Things happen. 
parties can open the door to what might be inadmissible evidence uh, for a variety of reasons. For example, this court made a number of pretrial rulings related to other acts evidence. Even during your cross-examination today, you came awfully close. I had a, the witness turn to me and pause and say, I don't think I can answer that in a clear recognition that that witness, Detective Casey, understood his obligation to honor the pretrial rulings. And we moved on from there. Um, I bet that's happened a half a dozen times in this trial. And that's frankly to protect your rights, sir. <coughs> The door could have been opened a long time ago to the other acts evidence with Erica Patterson. And I frankly kept it out, despite your questions. So with that, I want to bring the jury back out. I will ask the state um, I'll simply just ask the state, are there any, um, anything additional the state's offering by way of testimony or exhibits? You can then address the exhibit issue, then I'll ask the state if the state has any additional witnesses, um, and the state can officially rest. Um, given the time of day that it is, it's, um, 11.58. Um, I'm not going to have uh, Mr. Brooks start with his opening statement. We'll do that when we come back after the lunch hour. Um, I think, frankly, the time over the lunch hour will be good for everyone to regroup, hopefully get a little bit to eat and uh, come back fresh. And then we'll have um, his opening statement and the start of testimony. Before I bring the jury out, there's one other thing I want to do though. I just need a moment to pull uh, something up from on my computer. So is that is that addressing subject matter jurisdiction that you're pulling up? No. When would that be proven for the sir, record? Sir, please don't interrupt me. I need to focus on what I'm doing. I'm not doing. interrupting you. I'm just asking the question. All right. I'm not going to be addressing that. So, so would it don't be interrupt me right now. I'm trying to do something on my computer. Would it be proven I need to on the record? I feel it's important at this time to at least give you the advisement pursuant to special <laughs> material 28. It is regarding your decision on whether to testify. I'm not asking you to make that decision, but since we're on the verge of you starting your case and it may impact your um, opening statement, um, I wanted to go through the following. Um, sir, are you aware that you have a constitutional right to testify? I've been informed. Are you advised and informed that you also have a constitutional right not to testify? I'm not advised, I'm informed. Are you advised and informed that the decision whether to testify is for you to make? I don't understand the question. Do you, are you advised and informed that the decision on whether you testify in this trial is for you and you alone to make? I'm informed, not advised. You under, do you, are you advised and informed, sir, that if you choose not to testify, the jury will be advised that they cannot use that against you? In other words, you have that right not to testify. I'm informed. When you make a determination about whether to testify in this trial. I will further be asking you about whether anyone has made any threats or promises to you to influence your decision. I may um, also briefly go over your educational background. Did you hear me say that? No, I'll say it again. At the appropriate time, 
when we go through this discussion more fully, I will also ask you whether anyone has made any promises to you to influence your decision on whether to testify. Did you hear me say that? I'll be informed. And then I will also ask you if anyone's made any threats um, or coerced you in any way in your decision to testify or not. Uh, what's the significance of that? So that I can make appropriate findings about the voluntariness, intelligence, and your, um, whether it's knowing voluntary and intelligent, your decision to testify. So whether, whether I give consent. That's not the legal determination that I make. It, it is simply something that is your choice. Um, I will honor your right not to testify. Obviously, that's a constitutional right. I will honor your right to testify. That's also a constitutional right. And the jury will be advised one way or the other. There's a jury instruction on that. Um, did you hear me advise you of all of this? I'm informed. All right. Okay, let's bring the jury out then, and we can kind of tidy up the record, and then we'll break for lunch. Judge, may I remove that uh, exhibit, please? Uh, I think they're right there, so let me just take it. All right, it's Jury already coming out. Yeah, I'll just stick with it. Okay, so go All ahead right, and sit so it back jury. down. Thank you. Subject matter jurisdiction still hasn't been proven for the record, Your Honor. Should be proven at some point. All right, then I'll turn to the state. Any uh, additional evidence at this time? The state has no additional evidence, Your Honor. Uh, may we make a record as to the exhibits? Go ahead, please. Your Honor, uh, we believe that the uh, court has admitted all exhibits that have been offered. Uh, with the exception of one prior ruling on Exhibit 6. Uh, I don't know if you want me to list them all by number or uh, <coughs> there are, it's 1 through 6, 78, 1 through 178, but there are some numbers missing because we chose not to uh, pr uh, offer those exhibits. Anything specific as it relates to the most recent testimony. Most recent testimony we, with uh, Detective Casey, we moved 177 and 178 and one, I'm sorry, 175, 150, 151, 88, and 89. I believe those were admitted by the court. That's my recollection as well, but for the jury, um, exhibits 150, let me start over, exhibits 88, 89, 150, 151, 177, and 178, if I didn't receive them during the testimony, I'm receiving them now. And 175, which was the still photo. Thank you. Sorry, I had a scribble on my pad. And 175. And 13 and 14. Those are the outliers. I apologize. I believe those were received as well. But if Objection. I didn't state I think it, they was already received. <laughs> I appreciate that. I just want to be thorough for the record. <laughs> 13 and 14 were received as well. Do they have any additional witnesses to call at this time? Uh, no, Your Honor. At this time, the state rests. All right. Thank you. All right. Then at this time, we are going to break for uh, the lunch hour. Um, I am going to I'm going to have everyone uh, come back at 1.30. It's a little bit longer, at least uh, I'll, that's what I want to do for the lunch hour today. So I'll rise for the jury.
Thank you. Be seated. Mr. Brooks, anything from you at this time, given the state is now arrested? Which you mean? I'm asking you the question. Do you have any requests at this time now that the state has rested? What requests per, and pertaining to what exactly? I'll ask the question one more time. Do you have any requests to make at this time now that the state has rested? I don't understand what, what you mean by that. That's why I'm trying to get clarification. I'm not going to give you legal advice. I'm simply asking the question. Do you have any requests to make at this time now that the state has rested? I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. I, I, I don't understand what, what would that be pertaining to? I, I, I can't give I you legal know. advice, sir. I'm just asking the question to make a record. Do you, I'll ask you one more time. Do you have any requests to make now that the state has rested? I, I, I don't understand. All right, the other thing I want to do when the jury comes back out is you will recall I read instruction 101 at the very end of the preliminary jury instructions that just has to do with opening statements. I will re read that with the caveat. It will just say that the defendant will now make his opening statement. The purpose of an opening statement is to give uh, the parties an opportunity to tell you what they expect the evidence will show you so that you will better understand the evidence as it is introduced during the trial. I must caution you, however, that the opening statement is not evidence. So I'll read that if it's appropriate given the, that Mr. Brooks deferred his opening statement until the start of his case. Um, with that, we will take our lunch break. It's 12.09. If you could be back here at 1.25 and be ready to go at 1.30 with your opening statement. I got a question. Go ahead. Do I get to present exhibits and stuff like that too and admit them into evidence? Say, uh, at what point are we talking about? Do you want to use exhibits that have been received during your opening? Is that what you're asking me? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying if I got my own stuff that I want to uh, offer into evidence, which is, which is a question I asked previously. Do you believe and, the state has all of those documents that they might be able to assist with? Are they new documents? I don't know what you mean by new documents. Are they documents from the discovery that you have? They documents of my filings and stuff like that. I'm sure they have copies of everything that I filed. I guess without knowing specifically what you're referring to, sir, I did give you the admonition previously that you are prohibited from discussing subject matter jurisdiction during your opening statement. It's not relevant. I'm not referring to the opening statement. I'm referring to things that I want to offer Give me for an evidence. example, please. I have, I just did. I said I have filings that I want to offer into evidence. That's too general, sir. I need a specific example so I can answer the question. What are you referring my, to? My filings. Everything Which that I filed. Which filings, sir? Every one of them. Well, they have to be relevant, number one, to the proceedings. Okay, number two, I don't know specifically what you're referring to. Um, you can't offer testimony of yours through an exhibit. That would be hearsay. So you'll have to testify if it's your statement that you're referring to. I'm not referring to my, I didn't say anything about testimony. I said I'm being general based on what I've seen thus far. So um, are you talking about during your opening statement or during the course of the questioning of the witnesses that you're calling? Your Honor, with all respect, I just clearly said filings that I filed. Mr. Brooks, if I understood, I'd answer. I don't understand what you're asking me. You need to be specific. I've, I've filed a, a number of documents. <clears throat> I think that's on well, the record. Without knowing I what you're referring to, then my answer is no. But again, well, I guess I'll have to wait and see as to when you seek to admit them, whether there's any objection or not, and whether they're whether they comply with all of the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure. That's the best I can tell you at this point. I, I don't understand what you mean by that. They they will only be relevant to obviously the the, the matter. They, they wouldn't Sir, be relevant I, to anything I, else. I can't answer that anymore. We're going to take our lunch break. It's 12-12. We'll see everyone back here at one twenty-five. We are in recess. So I'm not allowed to offer anything in the evidence? For the record, I never said that. We are in recess. So I'm, I'm trying to understand.